It's been another crazy week in the world of AI, and you know, I'm just going to stop saying that, and let's just assume going forward that every week is a crazy week in AI. So with that out of the way, let's jump in to the news. We'll kick things off with Meshi. At Meshi.ai, you can do text to 3D, and this combines two of my favorite things, 3D printing and artificial intelligence. I asked my daughter what she wanted me to type here, and she said, a monkey eating a banana. What it does is it runs through and it creates an actual 3D object out of that. So you can see with the prompt, you get back four models. You can click on one of these that you want to use and you can click on refine. That's going to go down here and it's gonna create a better higher resolution mesh of that final version, which you can then preview over here on the right hand side. And once you've created something that you like, you can go down to the drop down here for download and one of the options is to download and export it as an STL file. This is natively what's used for 3D printers. From there, we can load it up into Bamboo Studio. I have a Bamboo Carbon X1C 3D printer. And you can see here, you can import it just like any other 3D printable object. Slice the plate and a few minutes later, we've got this adorable guy right here. Now, obviously it isn't perfect. You can still see some layer lines, resolution could be increased, but Considering how far this has come, it's pretty freaking amazing. Definitely looking forward to doing a deeper dive on this one. Next up is some news from OpenAI. They've actually shifted things over to automating tasks on devices. Basically what this is, is creating a large language model that's able to actually execute tasks, an AI agent, if you will. And I'm sorry to say it, but this might be the death note of the Rabbit R1. I was skeptical about the Rabbit R1 from the start and mainly because I believe that this is something that can be accomplished on your cell phone. I firmly believe that Apple is getting ready to launch an updated version of Siri using Ajax, their large language model that they've developed. And I think OpenAI and their breakthroughs with these AI agents are gonna be able to automate a lot of tasks directly on your device, whether that's a cell phone or on the web. This is gonna bridge that gap and take OpenAI and ChatGPT out of that chat window and out into the rest of the physical world ordering food, replying to emails, maybe even purchasing things for you. Time will tell, but it's another exciting development. On the audio front, the team over at Stable Audio, you can follow them on X, have released their full paper on a new Stable Audio model. As they say down here, this model can generate long form variable length stereo music and sounds at 44.1 kilohertz. It's capable of rendering stereo signals of up to 95 seconds on an A100 GPU. They claim that it beats all the state-of-the-art models that are out now. You can structure the audio into an intro, development, and even an outro from text prompts. And here's an example. And if you want to check it out for yourself, here's a link to the GitHub where you can install and play around with it. That leads us into big news with the Tucker Carlson and Vladimir Putin interview. This came out yesterday on X and immediately people started translating this using AI tools to get dubbed and lip synced audio using Putin's own voice. This one was generated with sync.so and have a listen. It's almost uncanny the way that it's able to bring that voice, translate it, keep it sounding like Putin himself in his own voice, but with the same lip movements and everything else that you'd expect from a native English speaker. Oh, serious. Okay. All right because your basic education is in history, as far as I understand. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, if you don't mind, I will take only 30 seconds or one minute to give you a short reference to history for giving you a little historical. It's a bizarre time to be alive, but I'm here for it. This is pretty cool technology. It's cutting down those language barriers and the things that separate us as humans. Cool technology to see. This one's interesting, and we're going to listen to the whole one minute, 38 second clip. The lead of developer relations over at OpenAI just said that adding a smiley face and telling the model to take a break can increase the performance of the model one to 2%. Now, this may not seem like a huge deal, but over long enough text, it can add up. We've long suspected that things like this existed with the prompts. We've seen examples where if you bribe the model, you say you're gonna pay it $20 or $100, it actually produces longer text. Now, this is an open admission that that's actually the case. And it makes sense because this was built on all the data from humans. So human psychology still plays a part here with these large language models. Let's have a listen. The other tips, just as people are sitting there, maybe they're good. They have ChatGPT open right now as they're crafting a prompt. Is there anything else that you'd say would help them have better results? 
we actually have a prompt engineering guide, um, which folks should go in and check out and it has some of the examples. It, it depends on sort of the order of magnitude of like how much performance increase you can get. There's a lot of like really small, silly things like adding a smiley face increases the performance of the model. Like telling the, you know, you've seen, I, I'm sure folks have seen like a lot of these like silly examples, but like telling the model to like take a break and then answer the question, all these kinds of things. And again, if you think about it, it's because the corpus of information that's, that's trained these models is the same things that is that humans have sent back and forth to each other. So like you telling a human, like when I go take a break and then I come back to work, like I'm fresher and I'm able to answer questions better and like do work better. Um, so very similar things are true for these models. And again, when I see a smiley face at the end of someone's message, like I feel empowered that like this is going to be a positive interaction and I should like be more inclined to give them a, a great answer and spend more effort on the thing that they asked me for. Wow. Wait, so that's a real thing. If you had a smiley face, it might give you better results again it's like the, the challenge with all this stuff is, is like it's very nuanced and and it's also like it's a small jump in performance you could imagine like on the order of like one or two percent which for a few sentence answer is like might not even be a discernible difference again if you're generating like an entire saga of text like the smiley face like could actually make a material difference for you but for like something small and tactical it, it might not Okay. I'll be sure to link to all of Lenny's podcast so you can listen to it in its entirety. But just as we speculated in the past, it pays to be kind to our robot overlords. At some point, they're going to take over our jobs, and I want to be in the good book. The world of open source large language models continues to impress. This 2 billion parameter LLM put out by the people that created the ultra feedback data set is actually outperforming Mistral 7B and Llama 13B, and... Falcon 40B. Those are 7, 13, and 40 billion parameter models, respectively. The reason this is such a big deal is this is small enough to where it runs on an iPhone, Samsung Galaxy, or other smartphone with about 10 token per second performance. This is where we get to a point to where you can run large language models that are able to perform decent level tasks with a small memory footprint. This could be a game changer for the mobile world. And the overall performance benchmark numbers seem to stack up and support this. You can see Mistral 7B has a 48, Llama 2 13B has a 41, and Mini CPM 2 billion performed at a 52 score. Pretty amazing. And if you want to try it out for yourself, here it is on Hugging Face. You can download it, install it, and play around. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do a tutorial on how to make that work. This one's really cool. It's called MetaVoice 1B. It's a 1.2 billion parameter model trained on 100,000 hours of voice data. It supports zero shot voice cloning, meaning it can take input and then in one shot, it can put out the same voice saying different things. There's long and short form synthesis, emotional speech, which is a big deal. And the best part, it's Apache 2.0 license. So this is free and open source. Have a listen. Hey, have you heard about this new TTS model called MetaVoice? Hey, have you heard? I've been personally looking for something like this for a while. I want to train my own voice and do a little bit of voiceover work, play around with it. But I don't want to pay for something like 11 Labs. This is another example where the open source community is really coming up to speed, and we're going to see a lot of really amazing models like this that are accessible to everyone. This next one's really cool. It's a demo from this company called One X. They're building these humanoid robots that are completely driven by neural networks, completely autonomous, and their demo is at 1x speed. A lot of the demos we've seen of robots lately have been sort of sped up, manipulated. If you remember the Optimus one from Tesla, they admitted that they had a remote human controller running it. This being completely run by neural networks means that there's no conditional logic code. There's nothing that's pre-trained about these. They're just figuring out the task and carrying it out. And here's a demo we can watch about this in real time. You can see it's walking over to this stack of clothes. It's grabbing it, it's figuring out what it is, and then it's doing the sorting. This would be great for something like working in a factory or a packaging plant. Something like an Amazon delivery center, for example. A lot of the environments that humans have to live in and work in are designed for something that's human shaped. Having robots that can come into a factory or a workplace without any special accommodations is going to be a big deal. You can see this one's unplugging maybe a charger from a wall and then charging itself. Oh, it's actually docking itself for charging. That's cool. It's almost like a Roomba in that case. You can see the one in the background going to open a door. So this is cool. And like I said, it's all one single shot video. 
They're walking through this entire office and it's showing kind of the capabilities. I keep saying that 2024 is the year of the robot and I think this proves it yet again. This one's cleaning up the house and that would be amazing. I would pay any amount of money. Well, okay, not any amount of money. I would pay a reasonable amount of money for something that just goes around my house and cleans up. The company says the way that they've designed the training, it allows you to onboard new skills in just a few minutes of data collection and you can train it on a desktop GPU. Head on over to 1x.tech to check out more information. Big news this week from Midjourney as well. If you've generated more than a thousand images using the Discord version of Midjourney, you can now go to alpha.midjourney.com and check out their new web UI. This used to be only available to very high volume people. It's coming down slightly. You still have to have over a thousand images. I'm not even there. I feel like I use Midjourney almost every day and I'm still at about 500 images. If you wanna know how close you are, go over to Midjourney in Discord and you can type slash info. That's gonna tell you how many images you've generated. I'm really interested in checking this out, but not quite there yet. This next one from Brilliant Labs really has me excited. They Start with a simple question, what if your glasses gave you AI superpowers? This is Frame, a reinvention of eyewear for the AI era. Take a look at the demo. This, in my opinion, is the future of wearable tech. AI-powered smart glasses that are able to augment the world around you as you're walking around. Imagine walking into an office and you see a whole bunch of people that you don't know and your glasses are actually able to tell you their job title, their name, and maybe how you've interacted with them in the past. Things like shopping or image translation or voice translation could be handled really quickly and easily with these. Now, I just wish they weren't so weird looking. These round lenses aren't quite my thing. I wish they would have gone for something like the style of Ray-Bans. I think they'd sell those in a matter of seconds. These are up for pre-order now. They cost $349 and they come in three different colors. They are going to eventually have a subscription for this to access the AI features, which makes sense. They have to have a way to pay for that. But as a special deal for our community, following Frame's launch, subscription for AI services are free subject to a daily cap and paid tiers will be announced soon. And almost at the same time they talked about this, Perplexity mentioned that, oh yeah, our model is gonna be integrating into the frame. And Perplexity's making moves. They already started to integrate with the Rabbit R1 and now they're moving into the frame. They're sort of getting out there into the real world in a big way. And I think that's a really cool move. If you aren't familiar with Perplexity AI, you can check them out at perplexity.ai. You can play around with it just like you would ChatGPT or any other large language model. Really cool stuff. And that's it for this go around. So many really cool developments coming up. As always, I'm Brian Lovett. And remember, all your tech are belong to us. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much. I'm the virtual prophet in the tech town. Breaking down AI, wearing the crown. From basics to complex, never let you down. All your tech AI, earning the renown.